battlefronts of the world today spread to the four corners of the earth, requiring men to fly over all sorts of terrain. The airplane is not limited to pitched fields of war. It fights over mountains, jungles, or oceans. In the heat of the desert of Tobruk, or the polar cold of Alaska and Mormont. Special equipment is constantly being developed to meet the emergency of landings or parachute jumps on remote land. This life vest is for flights over water. The parachute harness easily fits over. In the water landing, the harness must be shed and the vest inflated by pulling on these two cords at the bottom. There are also two tubes through which the vest can easily be inflated by mouth if necessary. The most important thing to remember about this vest is that to avoid being dragged underwater, the parachute harness must be shed before the vest is inflated. In addition to the life vest, there are numerous types of rafts holding different numbers of men. This type is one of the rafts carried on large aircraft. When the cover is removed and the raft inflated from its compressed gas cylinder, it is practically unsinkable. It is equipped with demountable oars which are stored in a special compartment in the bottom. Like all rafts, this one can also be inflated by a hand pump, which reverses to serve as a bilge pump in high seas. The raft contains pockets for whatever supplies might be needed. Provisions of a similar nature have been made for emergencies on land. This backpack from a parachute harness assembly contains special equipment for use in wild and intemperate country. It is the so-called jungle kit. When it is opened, it is found to contain material for subsistence, travel to safety, and prevention of disease in tropical areas. For use in the far north, the Alaskan kit is built into the back pad in the same way. It contains provisions against the special difficulties of the northern wilderness. If you are to use parachute equipment, you must know how to protect it. Here, collected in one place, are the mortal enemies of every parachute. Enemies especially of the vital fabric of the canopy. The commonest enemy is dampness and water. Salt water is especially dangerous to silt, but does not affect nylon. Another enemy is ordinary mud. Direct sunlight is an enemy to the unpacked canopy. Grease is an enemy to all parts of the assembly, and so is oil and battery acid, and the frost of a cold morning or a winter day. Keep your parachute away from all these. If one of them defeats your care, have the parachute it attacks inspected at once. According to regulations, every military aviator must wear a parachute. Under field conditions, regulations must be supplemented by the habit of long training. All flying personnel must wear a parachute instinctively, out of habit. Always use a correctly fitted harness. It should be comfortable and snug to the point of tightness. In an actual jump, the main thing to remember is to get clear of the airplane before you pull the ripcord. Don't count. Just wait a second until you know you're clear, then jerk it hard. Another important factor in the beginning of the jump is leaving the airplane correctly. When you jump from an aircraft, keep your legs together and your body relaxed, as these divers do. Keep your legs together, because if you let them fly apart, you may somersault like this, or like this. That way, the pack may open underneath you, pulling some of the lines across the canopy and burning the fabric. When the parachute is open and you're set in the seat swing, the first thing to do is to look up and make sure the suspension lines are clear of twists. Another important job during descent is to face in the direction of drift. This will show you where you're heading and make landing easier. Don't try to maneuver your descent by pulling the suspension lines to spill air from the canopy. This should only be attempted by professional jumpers. Keep constant watch on your distance from the ground so as to be prepared for landing. Do not land in a rigid standing posture. Face the direction of drift Relax your body and flex your legs slightly to absorb the shock of landing. 
as quickly as possible run toward the parachute in order to spill air from the canopy. Under average conditions, it probably will collapse of its own accord. If you see that you're coming down in a tree or a clump of bushes, cross your legs before you land. The canopy may pull strongly after landing, so fix yourself firmly in the branches and then shed your harness at once. A tree landing is one of several special conditions which may occur in an emergency jump. If there is a high wind, release the leg and chest snap just before you hit the ground. But if possible, stay with the parachute. Do not let it blow away. Run toward the canopy, pulling on the bottom suspension line. When it collapses, gather it in and roll it up. If the wind is too strong to be handled, shed your harness and let the parachute collapse itself. When you see that you're going to land on water, set yourself in the seat swing and unfasten the chest snap. When you're close to landing, unhook the leg fasteners and slip out of the shoulder strap. A few feet from the surface of the water, jump out of your harness and let the drift carry the canopy away so that it won't fall on top of you. Remember these simple rules. Keep your legs together and your body relaxed. Get clear of the airplane before you pull the ripcord. Make sure the suspension lines are not twisted. Face the direction of drift. As you come down, keep a constant watch on your distance from the ground. Flex your legs before landing. Collapse your parachute by running toward it and in the high wind by pulling the bottom line. A parachute is an insurance policy. Even though you do not expect to cash in on it today, you take it out to avoid needless risk. When you have a parachute and know how to use it, you ensure yourself and your country against needless loss of life at a time when no man has a right to be careless and no waste of any kind can be permitted. Yeah.